again, and welcome back to The Secret Life of Salmon. Today, we're right at the edge of the Cascade Head Marine Reserve to talk about where salmon live most of their lives, the ocean. In our last episode, we explained how young wild and hatchery salmon grow from alvins to smolts and move from their home streams to estuaries, where they prepare themselves to swim into the ocean to become adult salmon. We learned the importance of the estuary and how it is a critical place for salmon to gain their ability to survive and thrive in a harsher and much more challenging environment, the sea. A truly amazing superhero accomplishment when you think about how they started out. So why do salmon swim out to sea? Seems like it would be a lot easier to just hang out in the estuary, right? We'll find out why in this episode of The Secret Life of Salmon. So back to our story from last time. The smolts are ready to leave their estuaries and enter the ocean. Now they're considered teenagers, not babies anymore, but not quite adults. They can grow very quickly in the ocean if they can find enough food. Salmon typically travel with their brothers and sisters from their home stream to find places with lots of sea creatures they can eat. Most of these salmon instinctively head north towards Alaska, where food is more abundant. They will spend three to five years in their new saltwater home, where they can feast on shrimp, squid, anchovies and herring, even baby crabs. Some Oregon salmon have been found as far away as Japan. Amazing when you think about it. They can swim 5,000 miles across an entire ocean. Adult salmon work together to survive, swimming in large groups called schools. This allows them to blend together as they travel in a group, confusing their predators and making it harder to pick out one fish from the giant school. Salmon hunt in groups like lions or wolves. They work together to capture smaller fish. Both wild and hatchery fish share traits inherited from their parents, including the ability to gather together, catch their prey, and travel long distances in schools. An inherited trait is something passed down from parents to their offspring, an instinct or behavior they're born with. In the ocean, adult salmon are an important source of food for animals at the top of the food chain. Their bodies are made up of nutrient-rich meat and fat, making them an important part of the diets for larger predatory sea animals like orcas, sharks, and sea lions, and a popular food for humans. Native people still use traditional methods to harvest salmon, and lots of Oregonians make their living from salmon. Fishing is an important part of the economy, history, and culture here in the Pacific Northwest, so there's an increasing need for the bounty salmon provides. We also fish for the animals salmon eat, like crabs and shrimp, which can make it even harder for salmon to find the food they need to survive. The good news is that people are learning how to use science to ensure sustainability. Fishery managers set rules about how many salmon we can take from the ocean so that enough are left to reproduce. Eventually, salmon start their incredible journey back to the stream where they were born. Marine biologists aren't sure what exactly signals the salmon to turn around and head back home, but we know they have a built-in clock that triggers this instinct for all salmon, no matter where they are in the world. This clock tells them when it's time to return home. Biologists aren't sure exactly how salmon navigate back through the ocean to the rivers where they were born. We think salmon might use a mineral called magnetite. This mineral acts like a built-in compass that gives them a sixth sense to find and follow Earth's magnetic fields. Exactly how this works is another story from the life of salmon. We do know that once back at the coast, salmon access their smell memory bank to find their natal stream. They remember the imprinted smells from way back when they were fry, traveling close to shore until they smell the right place to enter their home waters. Arriving at the right time of year is very important for salmon to spawn successfully. In summer, the water is too low and too warm, and heavy winter rains can create too much water, making streams rough, full of dirt and debris. This is why most salmon return to their streams in the fall or the spring, 
These are times with the right amount of rainfall to create high levels of oxygen-rich, cool running waters that the returning salmon need to swim upstream to their spawning grounds. Our epic journey following the salmon is nearly complete. It has lived its adult life in the sea, and now it's about to return for one of the most challenging tasks of its life, to spawn and create another generation. Now, you may think our salmon has had a hard life up to this point, but as they say, you ain't seen nothing yet. This next phase may be the most challenging of our superhero's entire life. As the salmon begin their journey home, their bodies go through a dramatic transformation that made them look very different from when they started and they're totally focused on making it back home to carry out their final mission, to spawn and start a new generation. Once again, our returning salmon demonstrate their superhero powers as they make this final journey home without eating, avoiding crowds of fishermen along the way, and traveling through miles of obstacles. So join us next time for our final episode of The Secret Life of Salmon.